I guess I will start out because this is under my supervision, although I don't intend to, uh, um, you know, I, I think that we need to get a, the committee up and running as a, a typical uh, city committee. So um, I guess I'll call the meeting to order. And um, you want to call the roll? All right. Councilor Adams? Here. Councilor O'Donnell? Here. Councilor Spector? Here. Uh, Citizen Maza? Here. <laughs> <laughs> Citizen Simmons? Here. Autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like something on your tail of two cities. <laughs> Guillotine people. <laughs> the next order of business is to select a chair. Any nominations for a chair? Self nominations? <laughs> I was going to nominate Councillor Adams. I was going to nominate Councillor O'Donnell. I'll, I'll second both. <laughs> I'll, I'll second Councillor Adams. You can get two seconds. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Any uh, discussion? Sorry, bro. We're, not, we're drawing my nomination for you. <laughs> Thank you. Unless you want to go chair it. <laughs> All right. So, hearing none, uh, who was the first nominated? Councillor Adams. How many votes do I have for Councillor Adams? All right. I think it's been, I think it's unanimous. <laughs> Councillor Adams. Take it away. Okay. Um, well, actually, number three. Um, I, I, I've read the charter provision, but I, uh, I'm wondering if I can defer to you, the sure. solicitor. Uh, Process in school or, or, or others who want to discuss it, but I, I I don't really know the scope very much. Well, I I will say that I made a pass through these ordinances and called out a whole bunch of stuff. When was that about a year ago? How long ago was that? Yeah, when we were doing the code, right? The Correct. Code. Yep. Uh, before the administrative code, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, at this point, you know, we now have an administrative code which. You know, um, really defines the different roles of the different boards, committees, departments, and so I would like to look at the ordinances with an eye toward the administrative code and see what is consistent or inconsistent with the administrative code. Um, I think that would be a good place to start. I think that there are a, a few, and I'll, uh, I have one that I talk about all the time that has been sort of a pet peeve of mine, but. Um, like for instance, the subdivision regulations. The subdivision regulations don't belong in the, in the code of ordinances, and they should get out of the code of ordinances Absolutely. ASAP. Absolutely, I agree with you. Um, you know, it, it makes no sense that every time you want to change, you know, the the base of a, of a subdivision road, you got to get an amendment to the ordinance. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think that a lot of stuff that's in here could be sent back to the departments to deal with, um, and. Um, and so, but that would be what I would suggest, that we take one more pass at charter and administrative code consistency. Would it, uh, putting it in a different place, would that uh, cause any confusion? Do, do people, do, do people looking for that, do they typically the go subdivision straight? regulations? Yeah. Uh, as, as a, as a land use lawyer, I would typically look for subdivision regulations on the planning board's website page. Web page. That's where that would go. Like where all the regulations of all the different departments would be, would be on their website and probably. Yeah, and even if somebody office. contacted my office, I would defer them to to the planning department right. because it's so inconsistent in the code book. So I don't even bother right. to 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 lead them to the code book when it comes to anything with zoning. I send them right upstairs. Right. I mean, the zoning ordinance is an ordinance, and it, and it needs to remain. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the subdivision regulations by statute are regulations of the planning where they are not ordinances. Yeah, as long as there's some place where the general public can, can right. find them and it's open and transparent, then it, it shouldn't be right. a problem. But nobody's looking for subdivision regulations here. Nobody. Can they even amend the, the subdivision regulations? Well, that's a good question. I mean, I think the planning board needs to modify them and then send them to you to be amended. Uh, I don't really know what the process is because they're not, uh -huh. 
They're not properly ordinances. I thought there was a question on that. The, the, the council tried to do something, and I thought Wayne had said, I think the planning said that no, you couldn't do that because it was under their jurisdiction. There was there was something that the council was trying to do Proof that positive. that that uh, Wayne had said no, the council couldn't do that because it fell under their jurisdiction. But I'm not sure what that was. Yeah, I think yeah. You remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, th I think it was after the code. After the code was done, yeah. Um, Did you? I think I know. I was going to ask a question about that, but I, now I, I don't need to ask that anymore. Um, uh, after the administrative code passed. When we were when we submitted everything to general code to be incorporated in the online code, they kicked back a whole list of areas that were inconsistent. And then since then, I've also compiled a list of other places that there's inconsistency. So I have that here um, for you guys to start with. Okay. Please. Great. 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 Uh, and a lot of them are just references to BPW that remain that mm -hmm. just need to be changed. But some of them are larger things like chapter 174 yeah. fees mm -hmm. really needs a full vetting. Yes, 174 needs a full vetting because yeah. we passed chapter 40, we accepted chapter 40, section 22F, which is the state law that allows departments to set their own fees. And that was accepted by the city council, and so we really need to get fees out of the ordinances and back to the departments. That uh, the, there's a, there was an ordinance passed implementing this charter provision because the charter provision requires yeah, yeah an ordinance in August. Oh, so that's probably not in here, right? Wendy? Not till the next. They're, they're doing the supplement. Okay. I have it right here. Oh, I'm sorry, which ordinance is that? This is the ordinance that implements this periodic review that's in the charter. The charter requires oh. us to pass an ordinance. It's 1-1.15. 1 1 1 okay. You pass it a little late. And among other things, it sets a December 30th deadline for this. 31st, mm -hmm. yeah. For this? Yes. For our, for our recommendations? So we'll be meeting every afternoon from 2.30 <laughs> to 3.30, every <laughs> afternoon. And don't do anything on December 31st. You'll be 31st. your old minutes, all right? Uh, <laughs> out with the old and with the new. Well, I plan next week to go through this and put together a memo next week. That's Apparently he has no light. <laughs> he can go through the code book. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen anyone bring an actual yeah. code book yeah. to a meeting. Impressive. I got it yesterday. <laughs> he got it yesterday. Yes, he did. So, you must have known Well, you know, I printed the code when I first became city solicitor, and I've never reprinted it, so it's out of date. So you'll go through it? Uh, I will go through it, yes. I'm hoping to do that next week and, uh, uh, and have the memo out by the end of next week. I guarantee you, but I'm going to try my very best. Are you just going to make suggestions everywhere you can, and you can look for style and consistencies? And well, I think that's something level. that I think that that's something that this community needs to talk about. How how deep are we going in, into this? So the question would be: Are we going to try and do this before the 31st, as we are supposed to, or are we going to? Are you going to continue on? Because I'll be gone in January. If we're going to start looking at style and writing content and making consistencies there, that is a long process. Massive. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And that's an ongoing committee, and maybe that should be done. Mm -hmm. But that, I think, would need to be an ongoing committee of the, uh, you know, that could be set up next year, and that runs through. So, But the question is, are we really aiming for this deadline? Depends on how much we're doing, and if we're not, if we're, if I'm just running through this looking for inconsistencies, and I know that there will be a few places that that I think there'll be a lot of a lot of provisions, a lot of ordinances that we'll all agree easy enough just eliminate it. Um, there'll be a number that we need to go back and forth. I know Jesse and I have been discussing the 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 proper roles of the council and the and the executive. Um, and you know there'll be a couple of places where there'll probably be some skirmishes over that, but I, 
I'm hopeful that we can get it done by the end of the year. Maybe we won't. But I was just, I don't want to rule it out at this point. I mean, the ordinance that the charter required us to pass establishing this committee doesn't preclude other committees to look at this right. next year. It just says we have to do it now. So it actually would stand to reason that we do a kind of um, general overview at this point and possibly continue. I mean, I think we should clean up what's what's important in it at this particular point, and then take another look at it. Mm -hmm. that, you know. It's going to be an ongoing process, right, exactly. You know, right. because, because when we did the, when we first when we first decided to do this code, we did the codification. Um, I went out to all the departments with their particular section of the ordinance, and a lot of them just said, "Oh, we're not even bothering. Just just leave it the way it is." And I mean, unfortunately, that's what happened. And so nothing really got changed in a lot of it because they didn't want to deal with it. A lot of it, and especially the police department, they didn't even want to look at it. Russ didn't even want to deal with it at all. So it stayed the way it was, unfortunately. The good thing is I think a lot of their stuff was deleted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. 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 So can I just ask you a question on this, where you have chapter 128, the animals and fowl, where you have the, the running at large and restraint of dogs. I mean, you don't think that somewhere this, the, the license fees need to be listed? I mean, for the general public to know? Oh they yeah, are? they do. They need to be listed and they need to be- In 174? No. No? No, 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 okay. no, because with few exceptions, and the, the citation is chapter 40, section 22F. Section 22F basically says that any city or town who accepts this, this act, mm -hmm. the departments and officers set their own fees. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes an executive function to set fees, not a legislative function. Okay. So, but if you're taking it out of the code, you, and you're saying, you, if you're taking it out of the code book, then right. how does the general public know what these fees are? Because they're gonna call the clerk and say, I wanna do X, Y, and Z, what are the fees for this? And, and you will have a, a Not schedule of fees. What? what? <laughs> Not this <laughs> color. <laughs> yeah. So you. Yeah, yeah. Or no, call I, up whatever department. Right, or they'd be on your website. website. Okay. Right. Okay. Post right. So you will, okay. each department will have to produce their own mm -hmm. schedule of fees okay. and um, mm -hmm. to replace chapter 174. I know I've been talking with, with Shayla too about some of this because of, of what's going on over in Amherst with, right. with the, you know, impounding of the dogs and that. So, you know, we're, her and I are trying to work together to try to coordinate all of this because, you know, we have a lot of stuff going on right now with her downstairs with all of these 400 dogs that aren't licensed at this particular point. We've got it down to 300. I know we've got it down to 100. We've, we've licensed that many since we've sent out letters and that. Um, you know, so, I mean, we're working with her to try to, you know, coordinate all of this dog information into one cohesive place because it's like we're doing something and she's doing something and it's not quite the same. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we're going to get that straightened out. And the general comment, I mean, I think it's a fascinating question how much, um, how much of what the code of ordinances does already and city council does like parking spaces should remain. Um, but I would just say in general that to the degree we take things out of the code of ordinances, I think there has to be some kind of public um, accountability mechanism there. I don't know if that's beyond our purview or whatever, but when we talk about fees, I mean, mm -hmm. how does the public appeal to change with fee except exactly. right with the mayor? And more, more specifically, parking spaces, as I mentioned to yeah. you. Um, you know, the mayor, it, the same theory, the mayor designated all parking spaces, which I don't know if I support or whether I think it's appropriate or not, but I think it's interesting to discuss and we'll talk about it. Let's say the mayor changed the parking space what appeal mechanism is there. So I'd like to see the Transportation and Parking Commission maybe be changed administratively as well to have real kind of a enforcement and appeal, appeal powers. That would be my concern generally about taking too much out of the legislative side, yeah, among others. Right, and I don't have a problem with an ordinance that, well, let me, let me I need to, before I speak, I better think it through, but that generally requires that there be a process for parking spaces, but the process is the executive process, but that there be some form of a process. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I'm not, you know, I, I, again, 
I don't want anybody to think that I don't think the city council has a role in the big in establishing the policies for the city. It's a big role to play. But once those policies are established, then it's up to the executive to actually carry them out and figure out how to implement them. Much like the plastic bag thing. I mean, it's not, it doesn't tell the executive exactly how to implement this. It's up to the executive to implement. It sets fees. I know. Post taking those up. Well, also, it also mandates that Exemption. the Board of Health yeah. preside over who gets exemptions and who doesn't. But also, I mean, if you look at if you look at the stormwater fee. Yeah, the stormwater fee. That, that all over it. it, it the director of public works shall. Um, uh -huh. The director of public works shall. The director of public works shall. That was all passed under this charter. So you know, it, it, the stormwater fee is ordering an awful lot of stuff for the administration to do. Yep. For example. And you know, I've already gotten. I've already been copied on emails that some of what's in the stormwater is really unworkable uh, and really needs to be changed, and it needs to get out of the stormwater ordinance and let the executive department figure out how to bill. For instance, um, those properties, and I'm just. I just saw this today. Those properties that are being billed less than the residential rate of $66 shouldn't be billed four times a year. They're getting billed four times a year for like $5 a bill. And it doesn't make sense. They should be billed once a year. But the ordinance requires them to be billed quarterly. That doesn't make sense. And you know the executive should be able to say, OK, if you're getting billed $50 or less once a year, it, it, it doesn't make economic sense. We can save. I, th I thought I thought twenty five hundred dollars in postage alone if we build those people one time a year, and and so that kind of stuff you just need some flexibility for the executive, and and stormwater is going to be one of the ordinances that we're going to have to look at because there's a lot of that stuff in there, and I take responsibility for that not really being focused on that issue when this was being passed. But we're all so. I was focused, I totally agree with you, it, and it came from, because um, I was involved in that from day one, it came from a desire to take the heat off of the Department of Public Works and say, okay, be, partially because they were not handling the interface with the public well about that issue, so we decided, let's have as much as possible have the city council do this where we're dealing with our constituents and talking to them about it so they can understand it and we'll put as much as possible in the bill i never thought about it from an administrative point because right. i was too concerned with being able to handle this in terms of working with the public on that and making the explanations and wanted to take it out of the hands of the, the dpw but i totally agree with you now that we're looking at it i think you've got to have that flexibility and we kind of knew that when we wrote it we talked about it how this is brand new, it's got to be organic, we don't quite know. And I think one of the big things is it has to even be at the place where we pull some of those uh, requirements out of the bill and let it, let's see what happens and, and what's most workable and makes common sense on this. And I think there is an example where the executive should be running. And we ran into that on the, uh, the plastic bag. We actually did the opposite on the plastic bag ordinance when we were writing that. And we started going into the weeds on it. And we said, we kind of backed off, if I remember, and said, you know what? Let the mayor deal with all of that stuff. We're just going to set what the ordinance needs but to be. Deal with, you deal with that. We're not going to. Remember, we were trying to write this? Like, we're not going to deal right. with that. Right, yeah. yeah. And that's just uh, appropriate, I think. And I, I think we're going to find a, a common ground. We're going to find a balance. And I'm, not, I'm sure that not everything that this mayor might want to see out of the ordinance book is going to get out of the ordinance book. And, and I'm sure there's some things that you might think you like regulating. I mean, parking is great constituent work. It is really good constituent work. It is. I understand that. And it's still, we, we can still set it up so that it could be good constituent work for counselors without the counselor saying, there. I mean, this really came to a head, as you know, at the, at the senior center where you said, Put, your, put the space there. I have a problem with that. I, I don't have a problem with you saying, in, with this number of spaces, you need this number of handicapped parking spaces, and I go figure out where they go. That I don't have a problem with. Within a district? Or no. Area? Well, for instance, there's an ordinance that says, you know, if there is between 15 and 50 parking spaces, you yeah. need X number of handicapped spaces. That's perfectly appropriate. It's policy. But near a senior center, you need a higher percentage? Uh, you 
to get the mayor to sign it or override his well, disapproval. I don't know. I'm just saying, you set rules for certain districts. In theory, you can make districts smaller and smaller and smaller. And suddenly, you know, we would be specifying each where each space was. But I don't know. It, it, it's interesting philosophical it it is. discussion. So your comments will kind of incorporate your your vision of I will uh, that separation. I think that's the basis of our conversation. I, guess. I think that. Uh, <clears throat> I think that. All public property, except for school committee property, can be regulated by the city council. Um, and I don't think that its location, um, specifically its location in relation to um, an executive agency, changes that. Um, I do agree that we can't um, over articulate what the mayor does. Um, but I don't think, I, I certainly don't think that ordering particular handicapped parking spaces um, anywhere on public property does that. I don't think that's overly prescriptive. I don't think that that um, is uh, outside of our, 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 of our powers. Um, we have very wide powers given to us in Section 2.5. And it, the powers, um, if, if you look at the towers of, of, of 2.5, um, I'll pull it up very quickly. The general powers of the city council is that, except as otherwise provided by the general laws or by this charter, all powers of the city shall be vested in the city council, which shall provide for the performance of all duties and obligations imposed by city law. That's in that's in chapter that's in 2.5, which comes before the executive branch section. In section 3.2, it states that the executive powers of the city shall be vested solely in the mayor and may be exercised by the mayor either personally or through several agencies under the general supervision and control of the office of the mayor. The mayor shall cause the charter, laws, ordinances, and other orders of the city government to be enforced. Um, and I think that, I mean, that, that, that to me shows that um, his power is subject to our power. Yeah. Um, and that, um, Unless we are are taking away from a um, the actual um, ability to supervise agencies or control agencies, that we have that power, and I don't think that. Um, and and, and I've, I've talked to uh, Bill Newman, I've talked to Tom Kokanowski, who's an attorney in the city, who's a former city uh, assistant city solicitor in Springfield. I've spoken to Colin Curry, she's an attorney in the city, who's on the Charter Review Committee, and all of them agree with my interpretation. Um, of, of the of of the vastness of that power, and specifically with the issue of of our ability to regulate public property, and that they all are in agreement that there is no um, limitation of of um, our ability to regulate public property based on its um, proximity to a building that it performs an executive function, and I think that. Um, if we were pr to prescribe what colors those handicapped spots be, or which staff were to perform it, or on what day, I think that would be um, overboard, and I think that would be uh, usurping the function of the executive. But I don't think that um, the council ordering certain certain handicapped spots in any public lot is beyond its purview. The city council could surplus that entire lot if it chose to and if it had the council support to do so and the city council could um, sell it if it chose to it has broad powers to deal with public property and to suggest that there's some sort of exception when that property is near a public uh, a city agency is incorrect if i may please um charter very specifically uh vests in the mayor all the executive functions of the city and so the question becomes what is the exact what are the executive functions of the city and my position is that designating which parking spaces which will, will be for what use is uh executive not legislative uh, and <coughs> I, I don't disagree you have the power to regulate the council has the power to regulate uh, by providing policy and general guidance for the mayor in executing the laws. Uh, for instance, telling the mayor how many parking spaces he needs or a particular property needs. Um, 
Jesse is incorrect that the city that the city council could sell this. Uh, the city council has no authority to sell this. It has the authority to authorize the sale, which the mayor could execute or not. But it's the mayor who decides whether to sell the property, not the city council. The mayor can't sell it without the city council's authorization. Um, and, uh, and it's not my position that a parking space that is outside of a, or attached to an executive office building is, is the distinction. The mayor did draw that distinction. And that wasn't my distinction. Uh, I don't share that necessarily that distinction, but it was certainly came to a head for the mayor in an executive building uh, to designate parking spaces. Uh, but my position is that the city council as the executive has been granted very specific powers with regard to real estate. The power to authorize the acquisition of real estate, the power to designate the municipal purpose for which uh, real estate is acquired, and the authorization to dispose of it, whether it's by lease, by sale, however it's disposed of. Everything in between is executive. The executive controls it, except for the acquisition, the purpose, and the disposition. Um, we see that all the time, all the time. And so uh, the statutes do designate exactly what the roles are for, for a real property. Um, and so they do limit that very general provision in the charter. But that's going to be one thing that we'll, we'll have to uh, go back and forth on. And there might be a majority uh, report and a minority report on that. That's possible. So let's just see how it goes. And um, hopefully there won't be too many of those things. Um, and we can move swiftly through these ordinances. Uh, and, and not to go down the rabbit hole on this, but what about a change of purpose for municipal property? I mean, <clears throat> one argument was from the mayor was the city council couldn't take my office and put it in the basement. Correct. Or we couldn't turn this building into a, a school. But can the mayor? Okay. You know, that's... Um, and the other point I meant to make, and thank you for pointing that, is that when, when Jesse said that, you know, the city council could do this, the city council could do that, the city council can't do any of those things without the approval of the mayor. It's required on all of those things. And you have no unilateral control over any property ever. Because the mayor always has to sign off on these things, or you have to override his, his disapproval. Well, but by that train of thought, we can't do anything at all in the city because he signs ordinances into effect as well. That's sure. exactly right. right. That's exactly right. Okay, yeah. but right, but that, right, but that, that yeah, but exactly. So, I mean. so even, but even under the state laws that are not your ordinances, they're not your charter state law requires the mayor's approval for the authorization to acquire, the authorization to dispose by lease, by sale, the authorization to uh, change purpose. You know, for instance, we've been talking about the Fiker School. Okay, there's this whole thing about the Fiker School. I don't have to tell you that. Well, if the, if the school committee decides that they don't, they don't need it anymore, they fully surplus it, it goes back to the city, then the city council and the mayor are going to have to agree on what the new purpose is for this building. That's your role. Now you've agreed that this has been repurposed, let's say, something shocking. Recreation. It gets repurposed to a municipal office building for the rec department. Well, that requires your vote because under 4015A, a transfer from department to department requires a city council vote and the mayor's approval. After that, you don't tell the mayor who goes in what office in this building or where the director sits. That's executive. And that's no different. And I'm conceptually, those parking spaces outside the senior center are no different than the rooms inside the senior center. They're all part of the property of the city. And no more can the city council tell the mayor who's going to be in which room or which room the seniors are going to have sing-along in. Then they can tell the seniors where to park. And the council authorizes and mandates that those rooms be used for voting. Yes, because there's a statute that authorizes the, the city council to designate voting places. And so yes, you have an, uh, you have an exemption from the mayor, it's an exception to the mayor's overall control of that building for voting because the city council is statutorily given that, that authority. And otherwise, it just has no authority to, to tell the mayor how those rooms are gonna be used while he's the mayor. And that's, that's what strong mayor government is. And you know maybe people didn't understand that when the chart got passed. It's a strong mayor government. 
Well, on the polling locations aren't even met here. Those are proposed by you. I mean, Right, but there is a statute that allows, it actually talks about the aldermen in a city, that's how old the statute is, but uh, to designate polling places, but under our charter it would be the council with the approval of the mayor. Now the mayor has, you know, it's been delegated to another executive agency of the city, the clerk's office, and the recommendations come out of the clerk's office, but it's still an executive function. Just requires by statute the council to approve it. Just so I'm clear on one thing, if we told the mayor yes to move his office to the basement, we could not do that. No. The only thing we might be able to vote on, and then would have the mayor's approval, is if there's a change and we decide, as you point out, we're going to use this as a school, or the DPW is going to use the building, then the council would get involved and vote on it because that's a change in use. Just want to make sure. Fourteen fifty. Okay. Forty-five. But if two-thirds of the council wanted to make it something other than what the mayor wanted, then we, we could do that. Exactly. But within that, if... I don't think so. If, if no? I don't think that, that it is an, a legislative function to tell the mayor where his office is. No, but he was saying we want to use another yeah. use. We said we're going to make this the DPW. But if we did make the DPW, we couldn't say where Ned's office should be here. Except that 4015A does... 4015A very specifically says the council, with the approval of the mayor, it doesn't say with the... Yeah, but can we override the mayor? Yeah, that's a question that... Is I, that like any other override? Right. right. We could say, here's what we're going to use. Like, can we say what the Fiker School needs to be right. general purpose? The mayor says, I disagree, and the council votes unanimously for a different purpose than the mayor. Right. But within that, what I'm hearing you say, if that unlikely situation happened, that once that did happen, we couldn't suddenly say, here's where the city solicitor's office needs to be in the new Fiker building, which is going to be the new administrative building that all of you have to move into. Now, within that, all we can do is the general purpose. And within that, right. then it becomes whatever the department is makes those decisions. Is that? That's right. Okay. I mean, you get the big, the big decision, and then, then the mayor fills, fills in the rest. That's the way it works. Well, I'm very comfortable with that as a Ward 2 representative because people in my ward, we just want to talk about climate, the climate negotiations in Paris, all the big issues, whether we should have a manned mission to Mars. And once we set purpose in our ward, we don't really look at any of these other issues, except for parking. In Amherst, we call that the phone policy policy. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> so, um, is there more, any more on process and scope? schedule you know, so um, I think we find a role for me does any but any actual member of this committee get a role to find other than to call me and say how's it going <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's say I'd like a title like I'd like to be senior advisor <laughs> In January. Yeah, I will do that in January. January. In January you can become citizen <laughs> citizen I can be a citizen <laughs> but um, I mean, is that the only member role? Is, is Alan, you going through that? Are there any other roles to be undertaken? I mean, Perhaps right now, there. I mean, I'd like to, I mean, you're much more in tune with this, but I haven't really heard these kind of arguments, or maybe in the next few weeks there might be other roles that I could see coming up. But right now, I would like to see what your first take is and what we should be doing, and maybe from that, in, unless somebody else has roles today that they could clearly see, I'd like to leave that open. Let me, uh, so let, let's, uh, there's nothing like a deadline to get a lawyer to get work done. So uh, why don't we set a, set a meeting for the, n not the week, right after Thanksgiving, but early the next week. And um, okay. hopefully by that time, I'll have at least something out to you. If I haven't gotten through the whole thing, I will send yeah. out what I've gotten for sure. Would it work for people this time again? It's Tuesday. Uh, uh, Tuesday. Tuesday? Yeah. So that would be December 8th, right? Mm -hmm. December 4th. 1st, right? 8th. Or the 8th. So okay. it would give me the week after Thanksgiving to work on it, and then the week 
following that, we can, I'll send it out and we can get together and go Is through. that the second Tuesday? Yes, I can. I have my, board, my registrar voters meeting. Can people do uh, Wednesday, December 9th from 3.30, 4.30? Can everybody make that one? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Jesse. You just gave me a whole bunch of data work. <laughs> <laughs> 3.30 to 4.30? 3.30 to 4.30, if that works for me. Mm -hmm. Lynn, do you know if this, this one will be available? Um, I can check. Okay. I'm going to take a few minutes so we can move on. Um, I, I would just comment that there doesn't seem to be any reason why any other members of the committee couldn't write their own recommendations, mm -hmm. even if they weren't total like, like yours may be. But I think that would be yeah. good. I agree. Yeah. If anyone wants to take a look, make recommendations, ask questions if something should be there or not. Or Things get boring at Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, so you're here. that relative who <laughs> 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 writes out the good book for reading. I'll take the earth removal chapter. I got that. Now, do we? Should we figure out another? Another. We anticipate another, another one and figure it out some a couple weeks after because of the deadline. Stay with Wednesday. I on third. Uh, uh, I could say a Wednesday works for me. Can people do Wednesday the sixteenth? Sixteen. Oh, I have a meeting at four. Unless people could do two thirty to three thirty. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. On Wednesday the sixteenth, yeah. two thirty to three thirty. I can do that. Um, can you do it, Ryan? Ryan, can you do that too? It's not me. A little later in the day is this would be. Better. What time's your meeting, Jesse? Mine's four and till probably five thirty. Um, if we can't do that, what does Tuesday the fifteenth work? Uh, Translation parking four. Okay. Um, is December is, that, is December seventeenth. It's a council day. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to meet before council? I could do that. Mm -hmm. Should we do 3.30 and 4.30 before council? Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We're four to five. Four, four to five? Or is that I can do four to five. Can others do four? Four to five would be better for me. Okay. And what, what date is that? The 17th? <laughs> yeah. So Thursday, December 17th, 4 to 5. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So the 9th, we're in the hearing room. Okay, great. We already have the, the uh, council chambers booked for the 17th if you wanted to just slide Oh, we, do, we, have, we have it even that early before we do. Should we from 2 to 7? Oh, okay. Well, we can do that if it makes it easy. So tell me you can one day to report them now, the 17th? Yeah, the December 17th at, from 4 to 5 at council chambers. And the earlier meeting would be here when you said it could be here. Yeah. Okay. Is everybody comfortable with process and scope? I mean, that's the, that's the major thing here. I'm comfortable, I mean, under understanding. Yeah. Seems like it would be a fluid process mm -hmm. starting on our next one. I mean, until Ridley Allen comes back with what you know he comes up with, then you know, we'll go from there. Really, with the process and scope. Yeah, it, I mean, the the, or, the the charter itself doesn't give us much yeah. guidance. Yeah, I have the feeling the scope is going to narrow and narrow as the uh, clock ticks. As the clock ticks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, one of our recommendations may be, you know, an ongoing committee to have an ongoing committee for to, to look at certain things like you know. You know, stormwater review, um, or I mean, there could be a number of them. I guess we'll figure it out through this process. But one of the recommendations could be have, to have a further committee. 
since we just uh, narrowed the number of committees, now we could expand them, and this committee could meet every week and just read through and get the language page by page. Yeah, everybody can It's easy to say when you're not going to run the council. I know. That's why I'm that saying the whole point. <laughs> well, I think that we're going to a more of an ad hoc committee model yeah. with fewer standing committees and more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does anyone have anything else? If not, mm -hmm. do, is there anybody else? Motion to adjourn. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And Lynn, thanks for. Thank you. Yeah.